We're here with uh, Kyle Kachubar, one of our lead devs. Um, and we're here to talk about a bomb that Shopify just launched, or dropped, I should say. <laughs> Both. <laughs> which is that they're deprecating the Polaris for React, which as as the I remember when I was at uh, Unite back in the day and they announced Polaris, obviously it was all around React. React was the big kind of up and coming thing. And so for them to you know go away from this is a really interesting move for them. Uh, so you and I were talking earlier about how, like, what are the implications for developers? And is it, you know, a good move? Is it a, is it a bad move? Is it kind of neutral? Like, how does that sort of change the way that we, uh, you know, build these Polaris um, apps out, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously immediately the ramifications for me as a, you know, person building stuff with Polaris every day I don't have to write import statements anymore, yeah. <laughs> which is great. Um, but also it's like, I think the bigger win is that it's framework agnostic, uh, which is weird because it's n not really a direct benefit to us because we just use React for everything. So it's not like... Yeah, and we're and we're pretty committed to the React like framework, right? Like we're not just going to up and switch necessarily. Yeah. Um, but I wonder if maybe uh, their recent involvement and investment into, you know, Remix V3, I don't know if you've seen anything about that yet, but maybe they're kind of paving the way for that. Yeah. It, it's interesting because we're really big on TypeScript here at Helium. And it, it'll be interesting to see, like, does that simplify it in terms of, you know, these, all these components have different props that they now support and, you know, bringing in those types into your, into your code base, like, do you, do you feel like that's a good thing or does it more make it more tricky for working with like a TypeScript setup? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily makes it more tricky because I mean, we're all already used to, you know, when you need a new uh, feature for something, you go npm install at Shopify slash players or whatever, and boom, there you go. So mm -hmm. like um, for TypeScript developers, they're probably gonna be doing the same thing because how else are you gonna get, you know, the latest type definitions for Shopify Polaris. So you're gonna end up inevitably with this thing where Shopify will release this new change log and say, there's a new element in Polaris, and then I'm gonna go try and use it in TypeScript, and it's gonna be like, this doesn't actually exist. And sure. you have to inevitably install it just like you would before. So not anything new, but you know, kind of removes that benefit of, you know, you don't have to worry about versioning Polaris. Well, it's like, well, we still kind of do. So yeah, that, that's a question I have because, <clears throat> you know, Shopify is claiming that you don't need to version these anymore, right? Because they're just going to keep it up to date all the time. You have their script running. But now it kind of puts a weird spin on that because when they do add, like, let's say, new components, then, you know, and you're working with TypeScript, you need to make sure you're on the latest version of that, right? Because that's clearly versioned. But, you know, how confident are we in Shopify to be able to, like, not release breaking changes uh, as, you know, these, these new updates come out? I, I guess I'm just a little, it, it, it seems like it has some pros and cons, but I'm curious what your thoughts are on like, yeah. Well, I mean, clearly um, Shopify can't say we're never going to push bugs because they've done that with AppRidge, right? Like yeah. uh, with Meteor, our, our mega menu app, we launch our menu editor in like a full screen modal. And we move that from like a modal to uh, AppBridge. You can like, and tell it to, present your app in like a full screen mode and take over the whole window over the Shopify frame. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I recall them breaking that at some point, but I mean, yeah. they're, they're, they're going to push a bug at some point. They're going to push something that changes something, whether it's a bug or not, we're going to have to go in and, you know, address it because it's, it, it creates problems in our production apps. And we, now we have to immediately go up and fix it, which I hope doesn't happen often, but we just hope. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because one of the one of the kind of cool things is it seems like they're kind of bringing these components all under one roof now. So you, where you used to just have, you know, players components that you'd use inside your app, you also have these AppBridge web components, which aren't necessarily using different dependencies, is the way I understand it, right? Like they're uh, you just you just use the same. Um, I mean, am, am I wrong about that? Like, do you have to bring in like a separate script to support these or is it just kind of one? Yeah, I think they do have a separate script. Um, okay. So the, probably right, you know, next to where we're outputting the app bridge script in our HTML layouts, we're probably gonna need to yeah. put that in there too if we want to transition to this. Yeah. You know, one of the, 
one of the things that maybe they could be going backwards on here is just like one of the nice thing about React components is that it, it kind of feels like you get more batteries included with some of these things versus this seems a little bit more pared down and maybe that's out of necessity for the versioning problems where like you don't necessarily get, a, we were talking about earlier about the table, right? You don't get like everything included in the table. You kind of have to like, they kind of give you these recipes that you use to build tables with. Maybe AI kind of helps like If you want an index table, you kind of have to like put together this puzzle. Like they, they yeah. give you, you know, all these primitives to work with yeah. where you piece them together in, in such a way that, you know, it creates something yeah. like an index table or a card. I don't even know if they have a card component. They probably do, but. Um, right. Where they tend to kind of be a little more simplistic, especially if they're trying to support backwards compatibility. I mean, reasonably so, they don't want to create these bloated components that they're going to have to roll back in the future. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. I wonder what this does kind of in terms of the, you know, bundle size and just, just overall over, or the overhead that comes along with um, your package. You, I mean, I'm guessing the Shopify skips are pretty small. Yeah, uh, I would assume so. I mean, they're only going to put what they need to. In there, I can't imagine it's going to be much different than what Shop Five players currently is bundled as. Yeah, uh, they might have information on this, but I'm curious how they kind of handle the kind of flicker state of like when when they load their their script, or or do you just maybe uh, inline it to where it's it forces the browser to load their you know Polaris like script. non async. Kind yeah, of exactly. So that way you don't render these like sort of random you know s dash button and have it put out some piece of text and then all of a sudden you see the page shift. Mm -hmm. um, is that, I'm guessing that would be a simple solution, right? Just make sure there's your script is, is in line and not async. Yeah. And I mean, like the, it's, I mean, we have that problem now. We can't render mm -hmm. a component until the browser has parsed all of the Polaris component script that's mm -hmm. bundled in line with our bundle. So yeah. um, it's kind of, kind of the same thing. Yeah. W would you then use, um, just kind of bake this into your your like HTML file, or is it something where you would import? Are you importing there? Yeah, I think you just output the script in your uh, like you have like a layout.tsx, or like if you're using Remix, you probably have a root.tsx file. You mm -hmm. just put that in there, and then boom, you get Polaris everywhere without yeah. needing to import. So which it's is not cool. it's not bundled inside of like your main like app. As far as I understand it, no, okay. you don't you don't bundle Polaris into your app anymore. Yeah. That's interesting. You load it from Shopify CDN. Do you do you see this as like yeah, a, a positive change? Like, I mean, when we first saw this, we're like, oh man, here goes Shopify changes things again, you know? Uh, <laughs> Go from stack to like, vertical stack to yeah. block stack and all the way back to stack now. Yeah, like <laughs> we, I mean, we've been in Shopify game for a long time and we've seen the things change and, you know, sometimes for the better, sometimes maybe for the worse. Yep. Sometimes it just kind of feels like a washing machine. Like, okay, what, you know. Changing just to change or. Yeah, exactly. Like, do you, do you feel like this is Shopify moving in a good direction or do you kind of wish they just would have stuck to it? I think so. I think being frame, framework agnostic is, it works for a lot of people, right? Because not everyone wants to use React. People, yeah. it, it just, in, it's increasing, you know, this opinion of, uh, choosing something else over React. Like some people like Svelte, some people like Vue, some people mm -hmm. like, you know, Remix V3. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think it'll be cool to see, you know, what people can do with uh, Polaris now that they're not really restricted to React. Sure, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I'm kind of curious, like, uh, when when you're like, working with components um kind of how much of of a of a mental shift it is a develop as a developer i mean like i said we've been working with react for what like 10 years i don't know how long <laughs> it's been out but yeah like you know where you're not having to yeah import these components and use them it's just kind of a, a mental shift than what we've been doing for the last you know 10 years and it's kind of a it's kind of a yeah big change i guess it's a front-end de dev yeah, it kind of changes the way that you approach it, but I think at the end of the day, it's still all, uh, you know, XML to a certain, sure. you know, degree. You're still, it. the end result is basically the same. You're still writing HTML elements, giving things props and 
you know, just passing data around. So that the, the really the big difference there is like you're not importing things, you're not using Pascal case, and they've changed some of the props around. So yeah, you know, I know we at Helium have used other. It's we've never been able to use Polaris exclusively, right? Because there are some some things from other other frameworks that we gain from, like we're we've used Chakra in the past. Something mm-hmm. else like like um, you know one of the one of the things that we've kind of found ourselves in trouble with is like when you try and get too custom with it and Shopify does update something, then all of a sudden your layout all changes, especially now with something where they can kind of just release something at will and all of a sudden, boom, our app is, you know, they, they change uh, something about the layout. And, you know, if we did something too custom, we don't really have a chance to test that before Shopify just makes a big change. Yeah. You know, I, I do foresee that being a potential issue because we do, I mean, in uh, customer fields, you know, for the form builder, we had to get pretty custom with uh, some of how like the layout is working, you know, especially like the, that rule section, right? Like a lot of that is custom. You can't just build that straight up with vanilla Polaris, I don't think. So yeah. I do worry about them potentially like changing the, I don't know, the base unit size of padding or something like that. And now all of a sudden our production app is like all wonky because yeah. Shopify wanted to change something. It's unversioned. And so everyone gets it. For sure. Um, then you end up with this problem where like I said before, you have to hot fix on a Sunday. <laughs> when, when did we, uh, I, think I might not be in the know here, like when did Shopify actually announce this specifically? Not the deprecation of React, but like the introduction of this. Of the, the Players Web Components? The, yeah, Players Web Components. Uh, I don't know exactly when they released it, but it definitely wasn't today. It was, uh, I don't know, within the past two quarters, I want to say. I could be totally wrong on that. Don't quote me. <laughs> but. Yeah, I guess just sort of, I want to lastly touch on the topic of just Shopify changing things rapidly, right? Like mm-hmm. there's been a lot of good that we've seen come out of that as a, I mean, I, I feel like what it, a couple years ago, it just seemed like they just turned on the, the, the afterburners, you know, oh, yeah. and things just really took off and just change after change after change. And in a lot of ways, you know, we're saying, yeah, like we needed that. We've been waiting for Metafield definitions and a lot of those things where we couldn't even interact with them before and now we have all this API access Mm -hmm. but it also comes along with like man they're they're moving so quick it's sometimes hard to keep pace with it and especially if they're saying hey we're not just like phasing this out we're like it's it's we're not going to work on it like Mm -hmm. it's it's gone you know how do you feel like that kind of affects us as Shopify developers like kind of that whiplash yeah I mean there's always going to be like short term pain whenever there's a big change like this, you know, um, I, I, I feel for all of the thousands of apps out there that are using React Polaris and now have to make this uh, shift. Uh, I hope the Polaris migrator supports this web component change, but honestly, I, I think it's a great direction. I'm happy to be developing in a platform that's being built by a company that's not afraid to move yeah. quickly and, you know, fail if they need to and figure out what is the right path. Yeah. Um, that that churn is frustrating, but at the end of the day, you know it's uh, it's always good to make sure the windows aren't cracked and clear the cobwebs, and yeah. you know make yeah. sure that the everybody that's part of the ecosystem, you know nobody ends up as a legacy Polaris dev. I, I think it's sure. it's really good for a company like Shopify to keep the reins on their uh, dev community, trying to push that forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's really really interesting. I think it's a, a you know evolving topic where we'll see how kind of we adopt it obviously we you know even though they deprecated it doesn't mean like we, we, you, you still can use it obviously it's just it's not going to be continue to iterate on so i think it'll be a cool thing for us to explore this and you know maybe fall and circle back once we've actually implemented this you know we have a couple apps that have thousands of components in them <laughs> and so you know going through those and changing those out it kind of iteratively it's unlikely that we'll go through and do this all at once. It probably just kind of happen piece by piece. But mm-hmm. yeah, we'll, maybe we'll have to circle back in six months and report our progress. But anyway, yeah, that's it. I think uh, it's going to be going to be interesting to see it play out. But thanks for tuning in. If you guys are developers and you're interested in kind of continuing the conversation of this new Polaris web component, we'd like to hear about it. So drop a comment and. Uh, we have humans that actually interact with the podcast. So just <laughs> we'll respond to you and yeah, we'd love to hear it. All right. We'll see you later.
Peace.